Henderson Airfield on Guadalcanal is the most hotly contested strip of land in the South Pacific. New runways built by American soldiers with captured Japanese equipment are inspected by the Marine commanders. Air Cobras, fighter planes are constantly on patrol. For five months, the Japs have tried to win back this vital outpost. But their transports, bombed and beached, lie wrecked on the sands of the Solomon Islands. General Vandergrift and General Bogle push forward into the jungle, directing the campaign that has killed nearly 7,000 Japs on Guadalcanal alone. The Japs call Guadalcanal Death Island. Supporting the infantry, the Marines' big amphibious tanks bring up supplies over any road or through no roads at all. Offshore, an American freighter battles an oil fire just as she was preparing to land her cargo. Calmly, the Marines fight the flames. All supplies are saved and the ship will sail again. Americans, American Indians, show their true patriots when a troop train pauses here on its way through the far west. They bring baskets of home-cooked foodstuffs for the men in uniform. They're proud of their honor roll. 700 Indian boys from one small county are serving with America's armed forces. In their workshops, Navajo women, famous for their handicraft, make gifts and games for Red Cross packages. From this primitive home, a Navajo chief has sent three sons to the army, American Indians loyal to their country. transport of tomorrow becomes the reality of today. The Constellation, America's newest land-based cargo plane, is ready for her first flight. Beneath her wings, a P-38 fighter plane looks like a toy miniature. Built to fly at 35,000 feet in the stratosphere, the big ship is said to be faster than a Jap Zero fighter plane. Four powerful engines lift the sky giant aloft. A plane that can cross the American continent or the Atlantic Ocean in eight hours with a full load. Forerunner of a mighty fleet. On the Pacific coast, a new steel mill is completed at the Kaiser shipyard. Mr. Kaiser is the man who builds 10,000 ton Liberty ships in four days. The giant blast furnace begins to operate for the first time. No longer will they have to transport materials all the way from the big eastern steel mills. Now they'll make steel plates for steel ships right on the spot. American motorcycle dispatch riders train on courses just as difficult as they will find soon in action in Africa, in Alaska, in the South Pacific, or on the continent of Europe. For following these tests, they're off to battlefronts around the world.
Signal flares off the coast of Africa. United States reinforcements beating off a German attack as the Americans land under fire. take Nazi prisoners, many of them valuable flyers in Goering's Luftwaffe. Sent out of the country in transports, they go to prison camps. Their days of raiding over. The first skirmish between United States and German tanks proved the superiority of American equipment over the Nazis' famous Mark IVs and men and equipment are arriving every day to drive the Axis out of Africa. A treaty restoring to China full sovereignty over her own soil is signed by Chinese Ambassador Dr. Wei Daoming and the American Secretary of State Cordell Hull. The pact ends United States occupation of so-called treaty ports and marks the beginning of a new era in the Far East. In China, America is giving Chiang Kai-shek all aid possible. Giant transport planes speed Chinese troops to far-flung battlefronts. Troop movements that formerly took months, now men are hurled across mountains in a matter of hours. American planes and American equipment helping China beat the Jap. In the United States Capitol at Washington, the new American Congress, chosen and elected by the people of every state, assembles to hear President Roosevelt bring a message of hope and courage to free men everywhere. The Axis powers knew that they must win the war in 1942 or eventually lose everything. I do not need to tell you that our enemies did not win the war in 1942. I cannot tell you when or where the United Nations are going to strike next in Europe, but we are going to strike and strike hard. I cannot tell you whether we are going to hit them in Norway or through the Low Countries or in France or through Sardinia or Sicily, or through the Balkans, or through Poland, or at several points simultaneously. <laughs> but as we face that continuing task, we may know that the state of this nation is good. The heart of this nation is sound. The spirit of this nation is strong. The faith of this nation is eternal.